What does it mean to live a zero waste lifestyle? But not only from the outside, but also from within. What are the fundamental reasons underlying all problems we face today as humanity in the world? From economic to environmental. And when you say, be the change you want to see in the world, why are you not lying and why is it not a cliché? So to understand all of this, we need to start with this. Fear. So what is fear? And why is it here? <laughs> what are we really afraid of? What am I afraid of? I'm afraid a little bit now. But what can I really lose? Material things? Are we afraid of losing health, losing life, our identity, or are we afraid of losing control? What makes us that we want to control stuff in our life and in the world? But then I realized, ha! Oh, Oh, <laughs> I am a spiritual being having a human experience and there's nothing to be afraid of. There's literally nothing in the world to be afraid of, ever, for me and for you. So realizing this made me realize there's more, as I call them, weights that are pulling us down. So I love to say, we are made to fly, but there are some things like guilt, shame, oh, I did this wrong, oh, you did this wrong, oh my God, what will others think of me? Hate, anger, resentment, etc., which are behavioral patterns, call them like this, you can call them programs, which are imprinted mostly during our first seven years of growing up by our parents, social contacts, school, later university education, etc. And all of those things prohibit that we can spread our wings and fly and become our full potential. So we don't live our full potential as humanity in this world at the moment. So if we want to fly, we need to get rid of this, what we mentioned now. We need to raise our frequency, our vibration, because we started living a low vibration lifestyle. And in the matter of waste, all of this we mentioned is waste we need to discard. So what have we become? We have become 
materialistic beings, we find small highs and ecstasy in materialistic things. Buying this, buying that, oh, I need this, uh, you need that. I need to look like this, no, I need to look like that, oh my god, this is not fitting me right. And we get short highs from this. But we forgot how to enjoy in what life truly is. Because all of that we mentioned is dust. And we will become dust. So I said to myself, I don't want this. I want this. Because this is not your home, nor is this, and this is also not your home, this is your home. This beautiful little blue spot where everything right has happened. That you are alive now, that I am alive, that everybody here can enjoy this beautiful gift of life. And it doesn't end in just me and you and this animal there and, and the tree there. Everything is alive, starting from a rock. You are not just your body. It's just a vehicle, a dress. And you're not anything you bought or built. And in my professional experience, I always get the sentence, ah, what can I do? I'm just one small person and I cannot change the world. And you see, I'm changing, but they are not. So, uh, the hell with it. It's not true. You say you're just a drop in the ocean and I say you are the whole ocean in that one drop. And there is this sentence, a cliche people use, be the change you want to see in the world. And I discovered it's completely true. So, if you want to change the world, start with yourself. Because, you see, there are many studies which have been made in this field. In the physics, we call it quantum entanglement or resonance and connections in the ether. Some call it the information field, some call it the Akashic records, etc. Even Einstein had a saying for this and he called it spooky action from a distance. But what am I saying is that we are all deeply interconnected. We resonate through this quantum field. Information is downloaded and uploaded all the time. And one of the pioneers in this, and he wrote a book about this, is Rupert Sheldrake. And this is why I call this by his term he invented, morphic resonance. And what does it mean? It means when I make a change here, or you make a change there, this information is written somewhere in the universe, doesn't matter where, and becomes available for download anywhere on this planet. So by making a change here, you are sowing seeds for making a change there. So, 
this saying is not a cliche anymore. And it's completely true. You can change the world by changing, first of all, this here, and then this here. I don't mean the clothes, your environment. And with this, you will make someone changing his behavior on any side of the world. Our species is called Homo sapiens sapiens. So, which means the smart ones. And there are truly smart people in this world. Have been, always will be, like this guy, for example. Everybody knows. And there have been cool discoveries, like let's say plastic. But then there have been also the smart people who said like, ah, oh, we will take this plastic and make disposable stuff from it. Let's say a spoon so you can put some sugar inside your coffee. And then every day we can throw it away and let's make a bag out of this, which lasts for a thousand years, but we will throw it away also every day. Smart people. We need to know that we are not the only ones in this world which have the right to exist. We are not above anybody and anything. We are at the same level as all creation on this planet, including a rock. But then you see consciousness has a small evolution cycle too. And at this moment, we are raising consciousness in this world. All of us. And it's happening beside us. We are not controlling this. But some people need a different movie, a different book, and a different moment that they make a leap in their consciousness. So this is what you see and maybe it makes you angry. Why are people trashing the place, putting garbage there, not recycling enough? But it slowly gets there. And how? So you clean yourself, make your own temple and live what you want to see in the world. And by this, we will transform the world. So... Um, I had the amazing opportunity to travel a lot. So I've been to many places in the world. Some trips were business oriented, some were private. And I had to discover the world above and underground. I had the amazing opportunity to work with other cultures and to spend some time with indigenous communities in some places in the world, like the Amazon forest. And the world is truly amazing. And what I learned a lot was also understanding. Understanding that all of us are part of one creation and that we need each other to grow. I need you and you need me to grow. So stop filling yourself with waste by saying, ah, this person needs to do that and this and just show it. And if they come and ask for help, be there to give it. There's two experiences which were truly amazing. What I want to mention here in this lecture. I had the amazing opportunity to be on a couple of trips on the Galapagos Islands. And there you are a visitor because it's home of the native animals. All the people are visitors. 
And I had this beautiful, amazing opportunity to swim and dance and play with sea lions for weeks. And I discovered how different each of them is. And I realized every little piece of their own personality. And the Mayan culture had a beautiful saying, saying, in la kesh al kin, and it means, I am the same as you, or I am within you. What truly means the same life which flows through me is flowing through you, is flowing through him and her and this animal and that and that tree and that rock. So the second beautiful experience I had was in the Amazon rainforest when I was walking two hours to get to this, well, it's not a witch, it's, they call it a bruja, which is a medicinal woman, a medicine woman, a shaman woman. And while walking towards there, a huge butterfly, purple one, a blue morpho landed on my hand. And I greeted it and it flew away. And after 10 minutes, we arrived to this place of that woman and she was already there with open hands awaiting us, saying a butterfly told her we are coming. So you can say, ah, this is completely crazy, but it's not. I discovered, wow, how are we raised here in this Western culture that we forgot about this? That we forgot to use skills like this. So, zero waste. How do I live? I mostly call zero waste a low waste lifestyle. Because just by living, you're producing some waste, always. So, from start, I do not use some things. What I consider are an environmental issue and it's just, we don't have the systems to deal with it right, etc. One of the things is uh, plastic. My plastic footprint after a month is fits in two of my pockets. So when I go to the grocery store, I try to buy anything in other packages which are more easily recyclable or environmental friendly. There are always products which are not packed in plastic. And there are always products where you can substitute. So one of the good things you can always do is find places where you can buy in bulk. In bulk, I buy and fill my own bags, which can be cotton or plastic. I mean, a plastic bag lasts for a thousand years, floating in the ocean or in nature. So a thousand years, you can actually give it to your children and these children can give it to their children and one day there's gonna be a little kid walking with a plastic bag and say, ah, this is for my grand, 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 grandfather. The second thing is I try to get rid of all types of clothes which have plastic in themselves too. If you go to a shop now and you look at the labels, you will see it's 60% cotton and then 40% polyester or something like this. Especially the fleece jackets, where every wash in your washing machine, you release tens and hundreds of thousands of little pieces of microplastic. So I try, so whatever I put in my washing machine, that it's 100% natural. So I, I, I buy cotton, wool, and 
line and, and similar stuff. And actually, when you buy stuff, if you see how we are producing things in this world, you realize for the next couple of hundreds of years, we produce everything we need. So I buy mostly in secondhand stores because there's so much already produced. Why go into new shops? And there you can find truly amazing things. <laughs> if you want to get rid of at least 50% of your plastic consumption, you have to work on your cosmetics and cleaning detergents and etc. So I started 10 years ago producing my own cosmetics and my own soaps and deter detergents. It is so easy, you can make everything at home, you don't need any school, any workshop, there's mother YouTube and father Google which will help with everything and you can literally produce everything at home more cheaper and it's going to be 100% biodegradable, compostable, natural and healthy. So I started producing my own soap, dishwashing soap, soap for washing clothes, hair like shampoo bars, I even make soaps for uh, dogs, I made my own toothpaste, deodorant, sunscreen, I always say and it's completely true, but I love this sentence. In one hour, I cook a lunch, and in the same time, parallel to cooking, let's say, spaghetti, I make a bar of soap which will last a year long for 20 euros. And I will shower every day during this year with this one soap. So, when you will start to make changes in your life and you will be asking yourself what's the first things to do and how to live an environmentally friendly lifestyle start with asking yourself what is really necessary in my life. For example, is a straw really necessary when you drink a drink or a cocktail? And sometimes you get even two and you have one mouth and you cannot drink with two. So there are things which are necessary and then there are things which are just Oh, I need this because I'm used to it. But not everything you buy in the store is environmentally friendly. Actually, most of it is, is not. In the end, I would love to say this. We're not only choosing on elections, but we are choosing every time when we stand in front of a grocery store shelf. We're choosing every time when we wake up. And nobody ever made you to do anything. We have been granted with the gift of free will. But it's the way how we are using it that will transform this world. And there's many of us, and it's already happening. So, it's not, ah, I will, tomorrow, maybe, yeah. No, the time is now, and this is the place, and we are the people. So, thank you to have been watching this and walk with a smile.
because everything is just perfect.